were hoping to see today, the lifeguards regiment, they're the ones on horses. All right, so hopefully we're going to see them today if they're not too late. Now, when he died, his brother, the Prince Regent, really wanted a monument to him put up. But the thing is, nobody liked him very much because he marched everyone around everywhere. either side of the bridge and trust me it will stop them throwing things back up there. That's it, here we go. Come on, let me see how it's going. Are they waving? Yeah. Anyway, the milkshake came from the city opposite over here called Cleopatra's Needle. It was given to us by the Egyptian government to celebrate the victory of Nelson of the Battle of the River Nile. But have a look at the things he's at the bottom because they're actually facing the wrong way round. They should be facing out inside over the last three years. It's even got a royal suite inside this hotel and Prince Charles loves to stay here. But one of these Riverview rooms will actually cost you 2,000, probably the longest bridge to span the River Thames and a quarter of a mile long to finish on time and under budget. So well done the ladies, eh? Don't go too strong though girls because the other 25% was done by men and one of them was probably running the job as well. But well, we got this fantastic palace this side but if you look over here, we've even got a better looking building in New Zealand government. And he's now a drinking every rich eyed skippers we've been to see for more than 25 years. But look on the yellow funnel there. You can see the royal coats of arms. And our Queen's own from Prince Philip. But then London is well and truly. Flooded, shall we say. Over here now to the uh, right hand side, the red brick building is called Stanford Wharf. And it used to be a cold meat warehouse and where they used to make the Oxo bread. Coming over to the uh, left hand side again, check out the white pillars and you'll see four more scholars. From left to right, William Shakespeare, Francis Bacon, John Milton. The next set of bridges we're going under are called Great Friars and there used to be a monastery over here on the left hand side where the monks used to live. It took him 35 years to build and that is why he's buried in the crib below along with the Duke of Wellington and Admiral Lord Nelson. But coming over here to the right hand side, the big brown building with the tall chimney used to be Bankside Power Station and now it's home to that modern art gallery called the Tate Gallery. And if you lot know anything about modern art, you'll understand exactly why it's free to go in that big building over there. And they will only cost you five pounds for a two hour Shakespeare play. In front of the boat on the right hand side, the tallest building in Western Europe, she's got a viewing gallery up there, which will cost you £40 to go up there today. The lift only takes 90 seconds to get up there. But listen to this, last week he put it on the market for £29 million. Now you've got to agree with me, that's not bad for a drawing of a triangle, is it? The original Globe Theatre that used to just sit here. But then if you look in the corner, this month it is public diary when he was writing about the Great Trial under over this side that lasted for about 80 days, eight, eight days. There's not much to say about Cannon Street Railway Bridge and Park, which stops the trains from falling. Things that we can see in, they can't see out, and I've got to be honest with you, some days are definitely better than others. The Romans put the first one in over 2,000 years ago, and it was wooden, and it had wooden houses above it. The nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down, is absolutely true in Arizona. Now I see a few people twitching with their cameras. See this blue shiny building over here? Please make sure they come over this side and clean the 14,000 pieces of glass in the Charlotte glass. The fish market has now moved to Canary Wharf for bigger premises. The black ones, they look brand new, don't they? Well I'll tell you what, I've worked the river for 15 years and I've never seen any so fired her guns on the D-Day landing. But have a look at the large guns on the she travel, 14 land miles, if they were fired over land. And the ones on the front 
are actually aimed at the service station at the beginning of the M1. But back in 1939, now to this part of the boat here, as we turn the boat, but please be aware, as we turn the boat, the boat might start swaying around a little bit. In December 1953, when he missed the red light because it was foggy, he drove straight onto the bascals and they started to rise. A lot of people say to us though, where's the bloody tower? Well, you can't see the bloody tower from the bloody river. For listening, I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon here in London. Thank you very much.